Okay, we're back. Thanks everybody for joining us here. Uh, we have a special tribute tonight. Um, we've been doing a couple of these tributes to some of our favorite Beyond Vaudeville guests who are unfortunately no longer with us and it seems like you've been enjoying them. So, um, and by the way, if you are enjoying these, make sure that you like and subscribe. Uh, be sure to visit us on Facebook uh, and on Instagram and our Etsy store and uh, all part of the Beyond Vaudeville empire now. Um, so anyway, um, tonight we are paying tribute to uh, Ramon Pena Cartucho. And um, he was on the show uh, just once, actually, in, in 1991. I uh, passed away about 15 years ago, um, but he left his mark. He was a very memorable guest, and uh, we always uh, get lots of great comments about his appearance on the show. And uh, who better to help us uh, talk about uh, Ramon and his life and his career than one of his two sons. Uh, we're very fortunate to have with us. Uh, please welcome Clark Pena. Clark, uh, let's bring you on. Oh, there you are. Thing. How are you doing? Thank you, Rich. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so uh, thanks for being here and um, we had, uh, um, it was Ramon Pena Cartucho, but Cartucho was actually his stage name, right? Stage name, correct, correct, which is Cartridge in, in English. Okay, and okay. He, he had mentioned, I guess, that it, it was uh, a word for like a shopping bag? Shopping bag, cartridge, small case, uh, the, where he used to carry his guitar, that's a Cartucho. Gotcha. Okay. And um, by the way, if anyone uh, has questions uh, today, for just put them into the chat, and we'll uh, we'll try to address them for you. Uh, any questions you might have. Um, and I thought, uh, Clark, we'd just uh, show a clip of um, of your dad on the show just to get things started here. Look forward to it. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, Let's take a look. Our next guest uh, also has his own uh, cable program, and uh, we're, we're very happy to have on uh, Ramon Pena Cartucho. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, Mr. Cartucho? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, uh, you you are a singer, a comedian, uh, 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 right? You do all kinds of uh, things. Well, when I started, I had to do everything. Okay. Everything. They, they, they start to say, you have to do everything until you grown up. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and then I never grown up, I still doing everything. Oh. Now, you, you've done, I mentioned you have your own uh, cable TV show, and uh, you also have done movies. You did Jack and Jill was one of your movies. Yes, uh, Jack and Jill and, and Trinity. Because always I work in Spanish. The only thing that I did in English was Jack and Jill. Oh. The rest I always in Spanish. I have my own show in cable. Right. And uh, now I don't know. I, I bought a doll uh, that I bought uh, down on 14th Street. I don't know who this guy is or what he says, but I thought maybe you'd, you'd recognize him. Uh, he, maybe you can translate this. Uh, you press his stomach and he talks. Uh, <laughs> you know what I say? No. What? Uh, you, know what, you know what I know what I say? Well, oh, I don't want to know? No. Uh, oh, <laughs> he boy. say, Cállate la boca. Los muchachos hablan cuando la gallina. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, uh, maybe we better not. <laughs> when the gallina make pee pee. <laughs> okay. Who is this guy? Do you know who he is? This is one of the greatest Spanish comedians. Oh, really? Álvarez Guedes. Oh. But the problem is he's a millionaire. Oh. He can put the show whatever he wants. Is he like the dice guy with the way, way how he talks? Uh, yes, always like that. Okay. Well, you see, he <laughs> learns things on Beyond Board Phil, but that's very good. Uh, now, you've, you've met our uh, my co-host, David Green, right? Who, who? David Green is the co-host. Who is uh, David Green? No, Mr. Green is uh, the co-host of the program. And, uh, that's David Green. That's da David Green, right? And, uh, <laughs> David, why don't you be nice? David Green. David, be nice now. That's David Green. Okay. You say, I don't like you, I bet. When I saw you over there, I said, I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to kill. <laughs> okay. Oh, Joey, all right. Joey the monkey's going to break things up a little bit. No, look for him. Okay, no, no. If he don't remove from him, I'm going to kill him. No, it's okay. Uh, it's okay, Ramon. Uh, 
Shopping bag. That's your last name? Is That's my last shopping name. Shopping bag. Oh. Shopping bag. That's very unusual. That's when I started to work because I worked for a couple of years in Ringling Brothers. Oh, in the circus. Yeah, in the circus. Oh, boy. All right. Wow. So do you um, do you remember when your dad did this show? How, how old were you? And I, You know, I don't remember exactly how old I was. But when I saw that, uh, when I saw David holding my dad, I, I I was looking for the baseball bat at the house. I said, oh, I got I got I got to go back my dad up. But that that's the way he was. He just loved to have fun. He, he enjoyed that piece there. You know, uh, it was just great. I'm still I'm still laughing. <laughs> yeah, he's a very funny guy. And uh, and the that doll I did actually buy that on 14th Street. And Alvarez Guedes, who he was explaining, I guess was a big comedian from Cuba, right? You know, I. He knew he was a historian as far as uh, comedy, as far as uh, 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 circuses and so forth. And he knew uh, his history because it was a Spanish uh, type of uh, of uh, of a group that were pretty famous. And yeah. I was starting to learn all that stuff as I was growing up uh, by looking at his albums and stuff. He had so much stuff that I wish I would have kept like I, we were talking. But he knew he knew he knew his stuff. He was a historian uh, about comedy and about everything else that had to do with TV, Spanish now, TV. Did he grow up in the States or? Well, uh, he was uh, Puerto Rico. Is, uh, okay. part of, yeah. He traveled from Puerto Rico to New York City, made his uh, way to, uh, uh, to East Harlem, 116th Street, was an area where you had Edwin Marcial, uh, the, the restaurant San Juan. These were places were these type of figures, uh, Yomotoro, Willy Colón, all of them. That, that was the spot, uh, uh -huh. the restaurant San Juan on 116th Street. And there was a theater there called the Cosmo. So he made his rounds. He made his rounds. And let me tell you something, thanks to him, uh, you know, I, we, like I told you earlier, we always had gifts under the tree. Was uh, Tito Puente up there too? Tito Puente, well, that was one of his stomping grounds. So. Uh, I, every now and then, I bumped into the kids, and and, and I I bump into uh, uh, Yomotoro's daughter. It's it's a small clique, and you know, and I remember her when we were growing up. She was always making a lot of noise and pulling my hair, and we we used to laugh all the time. But you know, he's no longer around. But but we all grew up together, and it's such a great such a great crowd. And and what kind of venues did your dad play? Where was he? Uh, where was he performing? And he had a comedy partner too, right? Correct. Uh, 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 Anthony Reyes was uh, uh, Chicharron. They created this partnership, comedy partnership called Chicharron y Cartucho, and uh, it was it was pretty uh, pretty big hit. They were traveling at that time. You know, we had theaters, so uh, they were playing in in in, in the Bronx and Teatro Puerto Rico, Teatro Jefferson, which was in in in, in Brooklyn, uh, the Cosmo. So they used to make the night. And now I understand how it goes, but they would jump to different places that one night. And I guess invoice or bill per location, per act. <laughs> and the intermission, how, how do people wonder, how did they do three? They would play a movie hmm. in between the acts so they can travel to the other venues. And, what, and what was, the, and the act was uh, just a physical comedy, some singing, what, what kind of? Physical comedy, uh, my dad always delivered the punchline. Um, and they would do uh, songs, uh, comedic songs that they would create. I remember Chicharron used to come to the house and they would sit down in the living room and I would sit down on the floor with a little kid. Uh, and my brother would sit down and we would just watch them back and forth. And they, let me tell you, they rehearsed. <laughs> they rehearsed a long time. What I loved about their rehearsals and my, um, and my brother loved is that every time that they rehearsed, they would order pizza. 
<laughs> I was excited. I, I, I used to be like, Daddy, Daddy, when are you going to rehearse again? You know? <laughs> Never mind the comedy. Just bring me the pizza. Bring the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so Chicharron was the name of his partner. And that's actually like a pork rind? Or something? Pork rinds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's exactly it. <laughs> and that's the name he went by. Huh. <laughs> and it stuck. It stuck and they did very well. They did very well under Cartucho y Chicharron. Well, I have some photos that you uh, were kind enough to uh, send along. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so what are we looking at here? Now, the gentleman in the middle, his name is Willy Chevalier. Mm -hmm. uh, the gentleman above my dad is Anthony Reyes. Anthony Reyes was one of the people that would finance most of these shows that would go from theater to theater to theater. Um, it's really crazy that uh, his son... He's a retired lieutenant for the NYPD. We worked oh. together a couple of years later, and we, we, we found each other on the street, and we spoke about this whole time in, in history, and it's, it's, it's really crazy. Now, the gentleman all the way to the right, he was, obviously, you can see, he was, uh, he was a bouncer. He's, <laughs> he used to make sure that uh, the acts made it in and out of the theater. I met him many years later. And uh, he remembered everything. And everyone always remembered this picture. Now, the C, I don't know if that was placed there later, because I, I never remember that shirt. <laughs> and I, think, I think someone wrote that in yet, uh, later on for, Chicha, for Cartucho. And, and, the, uh, and the big bouncer guy, I'm guessing nobody messed with that guy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that, you know, if I would have known, I would have sent him to the same show with, uh, with David. Uh, so he would have been on standby off camera, you know. <laughs> All right. Now this, what's uh, what's this occasion oh, here? That's the family. That's the family. I was not even born uh, at that time. Wow. Uh, that's my dad right in the middle there. My dad uh, had a pretty big family and they took very good care of him. He was the uh, he was the baby uh, forever uh, to, to the end, uh, to his last breath. Uh, the family always uh, came through. They came through for him. They came through for us. Uh, and, but like everything else, Rich, and this is the unfortunate thing, when someone moves on, transitions on, it, it, you know, and he was the rock that kept us all together. Everyone just goes their separate way. You know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And did your um, and you said they took care of him. Did your dad have health issues or? Well, yeah, well, you know, uh, back then, uh, this his uh, his medical condition was not as understood as, as it is now. Uh, they had operated on his legs. Uh, numerous times uh, at, at, during birth and then later on in life, uh, and uh, he always had uh, issues with his uh, with his legs. And and what was the medical condition that he had? Well, he uh, and, and and you were very helpful with this, uh, Rich. I don't know. If, I remember clearly because I read some of the documents that you sent over. Uh, he was suffering from Crohn's colitis, which is a uh, intestinal uh, intestinal mm -hmm. disease, and th that started taking i started seeing the downhill motion uh once uh, he started there and it and, and, and it triggered to other effects in the body not all medications agree with you many medications have side effects unfortunately and when you have underlying issues you know things don't go right all the time right right and um okay now who do we have here that is uh anthony yates he's the one that created he Helped my dad. He became like my dad's friend forever to the end. He created the movie Natasha Satan, which my dad uh, played. He created the other movie, Yeyo, which my dad played on as well. Uh, and for some reason, he always used my dad as a bad guy. My dad was always the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he also played in this other movie called Vote for Me uh, by. Uh, a former state assembly member, Nelson Dennis. Nelson, um, right now he's uh, touring with a very successful book. Uh, and uh, he brought my dad on as a part of the community uh, where a super ran for Congress and he won. So, uh, and, and that was a very, very good movie. He played in all the su Sundance and, so, and all those other uh, local uh, now, venues. Now, your dad playing a heavy, was that out of character for him? Was that not like him at all? Or? No, no, well, with us, he was always, you know, the, the, a dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, you know, he just played it so well. Uh -huh. uh, played it so well. You know, it's, it was like, you know, 
uh, uh, you know, don't mess with me. That, that was the issue. You know, that, there you go. He, that scene, if I'm not mistaken, from Natasha Satan, when, uh, when the actor, uh, the corrupt police officer, came to him and wanted some merchandise. So my dad, uh, you know, he wanted to make a buck, you know, in his, in his uh, corrupt ways. And, <laughs> and he sold him the merchandise that the, that the corrupt police officer was looking for. And by the way, this movie, anyone watching, is is on YouTube. You can actually find it, Natas Es Satan. It basically, uh, the, the name it's of the guy is Natas, which is Satan spelled backwards. It's a great, um, well, at, at the very least, it's a great time capsule of New York in 1977 because it was all shot in the in the city. Um, and uh, and it, it kind of has become a, a cult hit, that movie, yeah? yeah? Yes, yes. I, I, I had some folks that said uh, to me, college kids, they said, look, I was at this event and they played that movie. I said, oh, you're kidding me. What event? And I, they said, we saw your dad. I said, really? I was, I was kind of shocked that it was still out there. I didn't even know it was still out there. Uh, <laughs> but it has, taken a, it has taken off. Now, he mentioned when he was on Beyond Vaudeville, he did a movie, Jack and Jill, that I can't seem to find anything about. What, what was the story with that? Well, Jack and Jill, once again, my dad was... Uh, on Jack and Jill, it was a triple X movie. Oh. Uh, so I guess it was not something that they wanted to keep out there too much. Probably and, not going to find that on IMDb listings. No, 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 no. no. You, they, they may be under, underground somewhere. You know how things are nowadays. Uh, <laughs> but dad played a, uh, a club owner and uh, he, uh, he did speak some, he spoke English in that movie. That was not a Spanish movie. And I, you know, I never saw it myself. I think he kept me away from it. <laughs> You know, understanding. But you know what? Now that we speak about it, Rich, I may, I may, I may have to hire some investigators and look for this stuff. Yeah, that might be hard to find that one. And uh, look, I'm presuming he kept his clothes on in this movie. Uh, I'm assuming as well. <laughs> now we really have to find the movie. We really, we're, we're, we're right, right when we finish here, I'm going to start making some calls. <laughs> Now, did he, uh, uh, let's just see what else we got. Oh, here's another shot. When, so he's wearing a shirt in Florida. What was this? Uh? No, that was the shirt that was brought to him. That's New York City. If you notice, he lost a lot of weight at that time. Uh, he was starting to feel uh, a little bit ill. But once again, uh, he was our rock. So we stayed with him uh, all the time, all the time. Yeah. And did he, did he um, so he always worked in show business. Did he do any uh, anything else or side jobs or? Well, he, he did play in clubs. There was a, you know, at that time, uh, you know, you can always have a side hustle, uh, for lack of a better word. You can go out there and make uh, $300, $400 cash and play at a club. Uh, also, he did get a call, but it was at the same time that, he, that his health was deteriorating. Uh, there was an agent by the name of Rosa Dare. Uh, she called him up for Radio City Music Hall to play at, uh, in the Snow White with Seven Dwarfs. Snow White wow. Seven Dwarfs. But his health, uh, the contract was already written, the money was already discussed, but his health and, and some of the activity that he had to do on stage and rehearsals, it, he just couldn't do it at the time. Wow, well, that's too bad. And But he actually did uh, appear in the uh, Ringling Brothers Circus um, yep. earlier in his in his life and career, yeah. Yes, he did. And, 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 you know, like, and you know this, uh, Rich, that he has such a great persona that he was, he was able to build a bridge from where he was to whatever his next venue or his next uh, 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 contract will be. He mm -hmm. built a lot to the point where he left a lot at the table because of his uh, illness. And uh, now here, this is your brother, Ramon Jr., uh, that's him just hanging out, watching TV, uh, probably watching Beyond Bobville. <laughs> they, they must be because they're smiling and they're, yes. smiling, they're happy. I see the aura. <laughs> and I got to ask you about this guy. So there were a, a number of um, uh, Spanish language shows on Manhattan Cable um, on the same channel we were on. And, and this uh, guy, Jimmy Del Rio, uh, ended up um, uh, appearing on a couple of our shows. Um, and did you guys all, did your dad know all the guys that did these shows and like Jimmy Del Rio? Absolutely. Well, Jimmy Del Rio, if you look at uh, Natasha Satang, he 
played a he played a role uh, within Mata Satan. Mm-hmm. They, they it was a it was a close knit group where they would call each other and say, "Listen, you want to do a you know you want to do a cameo, you want to do a piece." Uh, Jimmy Del Rio was always a showman. He was he was dancing. He would uh, he would be the guy who would uh, open up the the uh, the showcase with comedy. Uh, the hype man they call, they used to call they call him. I think do they still call him that? Where they would come out and they would get the crowd going before yeah. the show. Yeah, he was the hype man. He was gotcha. the hype. And um and I I've I lost touch with Jimmy Del Rio, but I'm I'm guessing he passed on. Do you know or I can do I can do some research. Uh, you know who still uh, deals with all these wonderful characters is uh, William Guzman, all right? Program on radio, and he's been out there forever, and he's still out there. So yep. you know. He wants me on this program. Maybe that's a conversation we can have on that day. Yeah, William Guzman had. Um, that's right. He had a show on uh, on New York City cable as well. Um, yep. Yeah. And um, you know, it's uh, it's funny, Clark, because I uh, ended up working for a while uh, for Estrella TV, um, a Spanish language uh, uh, network, okay. and um, I I brought some photos. I just want to share. Um, you know, because one of the things was I, I noticed, you know, the fun thing about Spanish TV is that, well, it's just fun. I mean, <laughs> it was like <laughs> costumes, wrestlers, models, and little, and little people. <laughs> yeah, tons of them. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, so this was for one of the shows that we did and this was uh i uh with uh, blue demon one of the big mexican wrestlers and um platanito um uh, i know i forget this guy's name but he was a big mexican comic down there yeah and um and they would just do these fun uh games where it was like uh the guests the the, the people participating in the games like in this game they're blindfolded and then they have to sit on a chair and try to identify what the person, what, what's on the chair, just using their butt. Um, <laughs> so, so in this case, it was a ventriloquist doll um, and a, an orange squeezer. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just, um, I, I just shared, I was thinking about that network because uh it was always fun watching the Spanish language shows in New York, like your dad's, right. and, you right. know, because uh, it just was, uh, I just, you know, my sense of humor and uh, good physical comedy and yeah. And the creation, what were they thinking? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> now, how uh, was your dad uh, in the neighborhood? Just kind of, um, uh, I, I think he had mentioned that he would organize like um, concerts and things and, Right. He would, you know, because of his ability to build bridges with uh, with folks and, and, you know, money, money was kind of tight when it came to the street, street fairs, street concerts. Uh, so, you know, they were calling favors. Look, yeah. you, give me one act, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple pictures from a photographer for free. You know, they'll, they'll barter. <laughs> but he did a lot of stuff on the streets. Uh, 116th Street, the carnival there. There was a huge carnival called the uh, Country uh, Country Music Club on 120th Street and Pleasant Avenue. That happened for a while. Before his passing, they created um, uh, Salsa on 116th Street, and it's still going on. It's bigger than ever now uh, because wow. it grew. It grew. Uh, it grew to the where it is today. Every summer, they still do it. So uh, it's you know, uh, things grow, things move on, but. It's great to know that my dad planted a seed in and in, in, in others in most of these uh, most of these movements, uh, which I, I call them movements because when they <laughs> exist and people get involved, the millennials are getting involved. Come on, that, that's, that's amazing. Now, did anyone else uh, in your family uh, perform, or your mom, or or? No, not not really. Mom mom performed in the kitchen, and uh-huh. I'm happy for that. <laughs> Cooked very well. Sazón, culantre, achote, adobo, all that good stuff. And Is it wrong? No, no, no uh, it wasn't just me. But, you know, uh, the thing is, I was always there. That was the surrounding. That's what I saw. I loved uh, the cameras at the time. Uh, and since I was the little kid on the set, uh, they used to t- touch this. Look, this is how we do this and that. 
and uh, and it, it just stuck with me. I, I just enjoy dealing with media, dealing with uh, dealing with uh, uh, experts like yourself, and, and 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 so many other folks that I bump into all the time. Uh, news reporters. Uh, I have my own press pass now. You know, it's just crazy. It's good. It's a good feel to be respected because of who my father was. Now you actually, um, but you do host a program, The Advocate's Corner. Yes, The Advocate's Corner with Clark Pena. I, I, I do host that program and, uh, and, and, and not, it's not a comedy program, but what we do is we, uh, we seek solutions for problems. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's the same type, type of service. I'm seeking solutions. My dad used to seek laughter. Uh, so we're, we're, we're doing the same thing in a different, in a, from a different angle. <laughs> so you're seeking solutions for uh, issues in the city, New York City, and absolutely. We we you know we've we've been bringing on a lot of uh, uh, spokespersons. Uh, the mayor should be coming up in a couple of weeks. The governor requested to come on. So we're just it's just a matter of my time because I I do have a regular job. So you know it's just uh, I want to have them on. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of questions. No no no, no softballs. Everyone's like Clark. Don't. You have those people on. Don't don't toss them any softballs. <laughs> Hard facts. <laughs> now, when you were growing up, was your dad um, a, a joker in in the house in the neighborhood? Was he, you know, was he the guy that was just always doing pulling gags and making jokes? Oh, my dad was a mess. <laughs> it was, it was a, one time, and I still remember. I was, I was a little kid. I, I was scared every now and then. He put on his clown outfit. <laughs> with a red nose. I still remember the clown outfit was, uh, 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 they were kind of like tights with ruffles and they had red polka dots all over. And he, you know, painted his, his lip, his, the clown, the clown, the whole clown routine. And, and scared the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought, Rich, that he was going to, oh, they're going to have a ball. They're going to love this. I said, no, 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 no. Not at my age. <laughs> Wow, lots of good memories, and uh, and um, yeah, it, it's. Uh, I hope we can find more of these uh, clips of him, and and uh, you know, it, it just would be uh, it'd be great to to see even more because it was it was a lot of fun watching him in that not to sis satan. And yeah. I appreciate you, Rich, for bringing bringing it back to life. I, I just I'm going to think about this all night. <laughs> Well, it just, uh, you know, Clark, I, I just wanted to, yeah, share a little bit about him because we just, you know, um, like I said, we had, we had just had him on that one time and, and didn't, you know, um, our audience loves him, but just didn't know too much about him. So this has really been uh, a treat to, to learn some more about him. Um, Absolutely. And yeah, I guess any, uh, any final words about um, your dad and, and, uh, um, Oh, what can, what, can, uh, what can I say, honestly? Uh, thank you, Dad. That's all I can say. He, uh, he has made me who I am today. Uh, uh, people respect me because of who he, wa who he was and who he is. And, uh, you know, in closing, <coughs> excuse me, uh, let David know. <laughs> this, this, this ain't over, Rich. You're gonna uh, you're gonna seek some revenge uh, on behalf of your dad. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie his shoelaces together. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Clark. I want to thank everyone who showed up uh, tonight. Tony De Pasquale asking, uh, "How about a Gretchen Wiener tribute?" Well, uh, we can work on that, Tony. Um, and uh, uh, Toto Payne Diaz says, "Spirited cartridge." I guess that's a translation of cartucho. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Dennis Devine says, thank you. And Mr. Pina, uh, and, um, uh, for this retrospective and sour milk sea television says another great show. Thank you everybody for watching. And, um, uh, Clark, thanks again for doing this. And, you, uh, and, and, uh, Cartucho will uh, always remain in our hearts and minds. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> okay.